Hi, and welcome to this module on atoms and primitives. This is the first module in our KX fundamental series, and that's because atoms form the basic building blocks for more advanced data structures in Q. In these videos, we'll be looking at atoms and primitives. We'll be breaking down atoms into their data types. So ad atoms are fundamentally a singular value of a specific data type. We'll also be looking at primitives, which are inbuilt native Q functions. And then we'll also finish up by looking at some variables and how to assign them. I'm just going to hide our contents for now, but feel free to show them as we go through um, if you wish to see how long, how far along we are. So let's jump into atoms. So as I mentioned, they're a singular item of a particular data type. So if we click on this link here, we've got some helpful information from the code.kx.com website. So these links, as we go through all the content, are going to become very useful to you. Um, quite often, I'll have both of these tabs open and be referring back and forward. So this one here brings us to our data types within Q. And you can see here we've got a number of different data types here. Most of them correspond to those of traditional um, programming languages. So you can see here there's an SQL and Java and .NET variants. Um, but we do have a particular number of time um, related data types here. You can see those from 12 down to 19. Um, so quite a few more than in most traditional programming languages. And that's because that allows us to facilitate time series um, analysis. So if we look at these two different data types, 2 and 2.3, so when we just define a singular numeric value without any decimal points, Q is going to interpret that um, as a long. So it's going to default that to type long. So if we put the keyword type in front of this, um, and we'll do it in front of our second one as well, we see we get seven for the first one. And then when there's a decimal point, we get nine. So if we go check those out on our data types page, we'll see correspondingly in the end column here, seven refers to a long, nine refers to a float, and there are defaults with or without a decimal point. We will be looking at the minus and the H a little bit further on and what they mean. Um, but for now, I just want to draw your attention to a few other different data types in Q. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a lot of time specific ones. So this is a time data type and a date um, data type. Um, so you can define them like this using the format followed uh, here in the, the literal column. Um, we also have some inbuilt environment variables which return um, time or date um, data types. So we've got a list of those here on our system information. So this is our um, .z nam namespace. So as part of the .z namespace, we've got some environment specific variables. So things like um, the we've got like release date, IP address, but we also have things like you know the local time span here, um, the local timestamp and things like that. And we've got .z.d as well uh, up here, which is our date shortcut, and then .z.t. So loads of different shortcuts here related to date and time. And if we output those to see what they look like, you can see they match the form format above. Um, so each of these items I've shown are singular atomic values. Um, so we've got a few exercises, a few, we've got a few exercises here just to test that understanding. So have a go with those. Um, please feel free at this point to pause the video and try these. Um, so hopefully you got on okay with those exercises. Um, I did hint at where to find the first one here, the UTC system timestamp um, would have been part of the .z namespace. Um, and then the second part of this exercise is referring to changing the default data type. So by default, as I mentioned above, if you don't have a decimal point, it's going to default to that type to a long. If you don't desire that, um, you might want to change that to a real, for example, or a short. And you can do that just by adding a trailing E or a H. So for example, here on my data types page, if we look at the C column, so if I have E, that means I want to change it to a real. And then if I had a H, that means I want it to be a short. Um, so depending on what you what you want, what data type you want, you might um, change the default and that's how you would do that. Um, so there's another short exercise here. Have a go with that. And then to finish up this video, we'll have a quick look at vectors and lists. So an atom in KDB refers to a singular value and a list or a vector um, is basically just a group of atoms. So I've got one, two and three here, which is my list of longs. And that's numeric value. Um, 
and then I've got a list of characters here and to define that I just put that inside double quotation marks so each of these um, letters or spaces they're all one character long and when they're grouped together that's known as a list it's also commonly referred to as a string so you'll see that in, in some documentation and people will um, generally call that a string so you can see how that's outputted here um, so try your last exercise there on I uh, putting the iconic hello world um, so we're just touching on lists very briefly to show the difference between them and atoms but they're so important within Q we actually have um, a whole separate module um, on them and that's the following module to this one um, so I'll see you in the next video where we'll be looking a bit more in depth at all of our different data types.